Well, building a DIY smart home needs a good set of software tools to write or manage code, monitor your devices and update data as well. So whether you're planning to build or already have a DIY smart home, then these are my eight favorite and most useful smart home tools that I use and will also make your life a lot more easier. Anyways, if you're into smart home DIY and obviously love the Apple HomeKit ecosystem, then I have done tons of Homebridge tutorial videos that you can literally use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along and to get some good karma from me. Well, the universe of DIY smart home automation is fascinating and at the same time it's a difficult world to enter. Now I've learned it the hard way in 2020 when I started my journey in building my DIY smart home. I had to literally comb through online documentation and at the same time I had few coding skills, nearly gave up. But there's a saying, no pain no gain right? That's why I put this video together to give you the tools to make your DIY smart home setup easy and also speeds up the progress and I must tell you that these tools have reduced my headaches drastically. I haven't aged a bit. Please stay till the end as well as I have a bonus tool that you can use as well. So if you're using a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi then it all starts by loading the software onto a micro SD or an SSD card and that's tool number one for you is to use the Raspberry Pi imager to load or burn the software to a micro SD card or an SSD card. This is definitely handy when using a Raspberry Pi. In fact, if you use the, the software imager, it has already built in smart home softwares that you can use by not downloading any image or you can load manually from a downloaded image and burn it to your micro SD card. Once you connect your smart devices to your network, you instantly don't know the IP address and that's a real pain. And that's where tool number two comes into action, which is Landscan for Mac or advanced IP scanner for Windows. Now all you have to do is just hit the play button. The software will then scan your network and it will tell you and see all of the IP addresses for the devices connected to your network. Ain't it easy? So you heard me often say let's SSH into the Raspberry Pi. Now SSH is also known as Secure Shell or Secure Socket Shell which is a network protocol that gives users a secured way to access a computer over the network. Now to use SSH you will need to use tool number three. If you're using a Mac you can use Terminal which is an inbuilt application and for Windows you need to download and use PuTTY to use SSH and also connect to your Raspberry Pis or even your network attached storage. Now, what if you don't have a Mac or a PC? Then you can even use an app called Termius to access securely your Raspberry Pis or even your network attached storage. All right, the next tool is to wake up the inner developer in you to correct your code. And that's where tool number four is using a powerful text editor called Sublime. Perfect to edit your Docker Compose, YAML or JSON files. It also highlights right away where the errors are. But there's also another online website called jsonlint.com to validate and format the JSON code that's typically used with Homebridge. Well, within a DIY smart home, there's a high probability you will be using MQTT to connect to your Tash model or Zigbee devices. And to test if the service is working and are able to communicate with your devices, then tool number five is to download and use the MQTT Explorer app, which is available both for Windows and Mac. Now this mod program has it all. It looks great, checks if the service is working, intuitive to use, and even automatically draws diagrams if and when regular data points are detected. All right. Let's say you love Docker and have a number of smart home applications running through it. Then tool number six is a must have for you, which is called Portainer. Now this nifty container displays all your Docker containers graphically. You can check container logs, allows you to start, stop or kill a container and remove any unused images. And if you run a lot of Docker containers, which then becomes a big task and pain to keep everything up to date, then you need to use tool number seven called Watchtower to automatically update all of your containers. Now, the setup is quite simple and it takes away all of that headache to manually run updates. Now, once you have all of your smart home applications up and running, then it's also a pain to remember all of the web addresses together with its assigned ports. That's where tool number eight comes into action called Heimdall, where you can have a simple and elegant dashboard. It doesn't need to be limited to applications though. You can 
can even add links to anything you like, some websites. So it's a one-stop shop to easily access your applications. Now, not to forget my bonus tool called Screen Sharing and Team Viewer. Depending if it's a Mac or Windows, I use these apps to do remote sessions securely with my customers to configure and troubleshoot their smart home systems. Plus, if you are out to and about to help those other DIYers, then these apps allow you to copy and paste commands plus chat at the same time. And just like that. These are my eight most used and favorite tools regarding my DIY smart home. So let me know in the comment section if there are any great tools out there that you use and I might have missed. Don't forget to check these HomeRich tutorials and until the next video my friends, have a nice day, cheers and happy automation.